Hi, this is Bill, and you are on Finest Travel Beat with Angela and Bill. Today we take you on board the Celebrity Equinox, where we recently did an eight-night Southern Caribbean sailing. We're going to give you a full ship tour, a review. We'll walk around the ship, tell you what we liked, what we thought could have been improved, and whether we think this ship was right for us, and more importantly, right for you. Angel, I hope you enjoyed the rest of this video and that you gained some value out of it. We really appreciate you watching. The Celebrity Equinox is a solstice class ship. It was first built in 2009. It was what I would call a medium size larger ship, if that makes any sense. It's 122,000 tons, has a full passenger capacity of 3,434 passengers and approximately 1,000 crew. Now, obviously, that capacity takes into account third and fourth passengers in staterooms. I'm going to apologize in advance if this video jumps around a little bit. The particular selling we were on was a travel agency convention, so... Our days were very busy with seminars, classes, presentations, and networking. So I had to kind of film in between a very, very busy and hectic schedule. So hopefully it makes sense, and I'll try to talk you through everything. We're going to start up here on Deck 15. On Deck 15, towards the aft elevators, there is the Whiskey House at the Lawn Club. They sell some very high-end whiskeys. I am not personally a whiskey drinker, a bourbon drinker, an aficionado in any way. It was not open when I went in there, but I can only imagine that the uh, the whiskeys that they had were pretty expensive. And they did offer whiskey tastings during the sailing. I, again, have not participated in that, but it was something that was offered. Stepping out and walking aft on Deck 15 is the Lawn Club. The Lawn Club, uh, yes, that is real grass you're looking at there. Celebrity does have uh, on some of their ships real actual lawn up there, which is really nice. Very, very well maintained. Uh, just absolutely beautiful. Really nice to actually walk on real grass while you're uh, walking around the ship. Over here is something really interesting, and I'm going to show you another video on this at some point. This is where you can do glass blowing. Now, Angela did do this. Uh, it's Hollywood hot glass, and you can, uh, as you can see there, there's somebody already that on embarkation day that's starting. Uh, you can make your own bowls or vases, uh, various different things. Uh, there is an additional cost to this. Uh, the cost will vary depending on what you're making, but you can make things of, of various colors. They're beautiful. There's things that came out. Uh, again, I'm going to do a quick video of what Angela did. You can see there's some of the options. There's actually soap dispensers and and uh, just different things you can make. It was, it was really amazing and Angela had a ton of fun doing this. Continuing back from Hollywood Hot Glass on the Lawn Club area is a area where they have, uh, again, more grass and the a big TV screen. There is not a TV screen near the main pool. The TV screens up here, as you can see right now, they have the map showing, but they did things like movies under the stars and showed different uh, TV shows. I believe they had football games on as well uh, during the sailing. It was a little bit earlier in the season, it was before preseason started, so I think they may have had some college games on up there. Continuing to walk aft on deck 15. There is, again, this, this lawn area. I believe they have lawn bowling and bocce on uh, either side that's available for you to do. Again, we didn't participate in that. Uh, it was a pretty busy schedule, but they did have different things that you could do up there. I want to show you real quick over here. You can see I'm picking up one of these towels. The towels on Celebrity are amazing. They are so thick and so plush. And uh, one of the things we like is you don't need to sign them out or towel cards or anything like that that it's on the honor system so please keep it on the honor system and don't be tempted to take one home again beautiful views up here you see people already this is embarkation day they're just sitting in the chairs looking out on the water absolutely gorgeous 
and as you go towards the back of the ship is the Sunset Bar. Uh, again, another really, really great spot to have a drink, relax, uh, take in a beautiful aft view. Uh, the aft view is absolutely amazing. We, uh, I'll digress, but we did an aft balcony on the Regal Princess recently. Uh, we'll have videos up on that, but it was absolutely breathtaking, some of the views we saw. And it's just very calming back here, and generally it's not as windy as the sides of the ship. So this is a nice spot. Again, doesn't usually get too crowded, especially early in the cruise. People tend to not know about it so much. Now, real quick before we leave Deck 15, I just wanted to show you, this was a couple of days later at the Captain's Club reception. The Captain's Club is Celebrities Loyalty Club. It's based on the number of cruises that you have been on. Depending on the number of passengers, certain levels of the Captain's Club get invited to a little cocktail reception with the senior officers and the captain. As you can see, they walk around with some uh, free canapes or appetizers, and they also serve some drinks. They will recognize the top sailors or the people that have sailed the most nights, which is incredible, some of the number of nights people sail on cruises. But it's a lot of fun, and if you get invited to it, it's something you should go to. And you see I'm talking so much that I magically transported to Deck 12 and the forward part of the ship. This area is a solarium area. It is glassed in, climate controlled. The area is adults only. For portions of the day, there'll be signage to what times are adults only and what times families are allowed in this area. But it does tend to be a quieter area, more relaxing, again, nice and climate controlled. There's a spa cafe there. They have some smoothies, fruits, things like that available. I think I have the menu you can see up here a little bit. But the Solarium was a great spot that we tended to go to after excursions. We just kind of wanted to unwind, relax a little bit before dinner. Unlike some pools on cruise ships, the pool here also was a manageable depth. I, for the life of me, can't understand why you would have a seven-foot deep swimming pool on a cruise ship, but for some reason they do. This pool was, uh, I believe it was about five feet deep, four and a half feet deep. Angela had no issue standing up in this pool at all. And again, this is included. This is not an upcharge area in any way. The lounges are nice and padded, uh, a real nice spot to relax. Continuing forward on deck 12, we enter right off of the solarium is the spa area. Off to the right here is the uh, beauty area. There's a spa where you can get different treatments. You can get, uh, if you're a guy, you can get uh, a shave or a haircut. There's a barber there, as you can see. There's a place where women can get their hair done or their nails done. Different types of beauty treatments. Uh, cruise ships, spas have gone way more than just the typical massage rooms that they used to be. There's all kinds of treatments. They have, I believe on this one, is they have the Good Feet store. Uh, a lot of cruise ships do have that. Again, there's a salon where uh, you can get different treatments. Now, generally, a piece of advice is that spa treatments and massages are always less expensive on port days. Then they are on C days. C days, they tend to book up very quickly, and they are the highest price. And there is Angela checking out pricing as we speak. But again, if you're interested in a spa, especially if you're looking to do it on a C day, book it early, get there as soon as you get on the cruise ship, and uh, make your appointment. Walking forward from the spa and salon area is the gym. As you can see, the gym has... Plenty of elliptical machines. They have exercise bikes, treadmills. Uh, over here is uh, we can get towels. You can actually get some cold towels to cool off in, which is very, very nice. Uh, Celebrity also gives cold towels when you come back from excursions, which can be very, very, very refreshing as you're waiting to get back on the ship. This is also where you would sign up for exercise classes if you were to uh, do that or partake in that. Uh, if you've seen myself and Angela we don't really partake in exercise classes very much but this is a great way to uh, to burn off some of those calories in the buffet 
uh, as you can see there's different weights um, and a really nice view there as well now we're back up on deck 14 we are walking from the aft part of the ship and walking forward now deck 14 is the Lido deck it's a little different on this ship usually the Lido deck is also on the pool deck in this case it is not the Lido deck is one step one uh, level above the pool deck and the ocean view cafe which you'll see a little bit later on which is their buffet is located on deck 14. Now we're looking down on deck 12 as you can see celebrity is of the superstitious uh, mindset so there is no deck 13 or floor 13 it goes directly from 12 to 14. Here is the jogging track um, I don't really see people jogging on many cruise ships at all. They tend to be kind of jammed in areas where people with drinks are going from one spot to the other and also very close to lounge chairs and stuff. So I guess other than maybe very early in the morning, uh, which if we're up early in the morning, it's usually for an excursion, uh, you wouldn't really see jogging. As you can see here, maybe some walking, but these lounge chairs are really, really close. And if somebody got up, I could see somebody, you know, taking quite a header as you continue to walk forward on the jogging track is the mast grill over on this side uh, the mast grill has hamburgers hot dogs fries uh, cooked to order excellent excellent choice for lunch really enjoyed that we went there pretty regularly grab something and walk there is also a place right there we can get drinks you get your soda uh, beer if you want on the other side is a the mast grill bar which you can get full drinks at my only complaint about the mass grill is there is very very little seating up here there's some tables when it is busier you're not going to have any chance of getting a table up here so you pretty much just have to take what you want to go eat and find someplace else to uh, to eat but again the, the food here was was very good great for a quick hamburger or a hot dog or uh with some cheese fries and as I said, on the starboard side, which is the right side of the ship as you're looking forward, there's some tricks for that, is the mast bar. Uh, Botting service and service in general on the ship was fantastic. The uh, Loved the bars, enjoyed it. I'll talk to you a little bit about something that kind of disappoints me with Celebrity. I'll give you some of them at the end. We'll give you some thoughts on some of the things that we really think could have been improved and some things where Celebrity may be going in a direction we're not thrilled with. Continuing on deck 14 here is a view into the Solarium area I was showing you before on deck 12. And then when we go inside is one of our favorite areas on this class of ships which is the sky lounge as you see here the sky lounge is a glassed in area at the forward end of the ship again deck 14 lots of seating areas in here really really nice areas to look out the windows I can only imagine how nice it must be on one of these ships to go through Alaska or the Norwegian fjords or other areas where just scenic cruising is is the way to do it. The chairs are absolutely phenomenally comfortable. Again, boss service, fantastic service on the ship in general was, was great. To the left there, they also do some things. They'll do at night they'll do some uh, games and some parties, some disco. Again, friendly service. Everybody's always waving and smiling. Uh, great spot to relax for a drink before dinner. Uh, unwind after dinner or after the show just kind of sit there and just ponder life and look at the ocean and again I can only imagine how nice it must be on an Alaskan cruise and like I said in the evenings they do have some live music they'll have dancing uh, various uh, shows and parties and things like that and they'll also hold some special events up here excuse a little bit of a dance floor and there's an area over there for a DJ or a band and we're back down to deck 12 again my apologies for jumping around a little bit it just felt kind of disjointed we had some weather and then there was some actually some nice ports on this cruise as well aruba bonaire and curacao uh, we'll have separate videos on the things we did at those ports that's something we're going to look to be doing 
in the future on the channel is give you some ideas on some shore excursions or some things you can do on your own at the ports. We're walking now on deck 12 and we'll finally show you the main pool area. Again, this was a cruise that had a lot of travel advisors on it. It was a bit of a convention or a seminar at sea with some of the leaders of all of the cruise lines which were on board, which was quite interesting. But the uh, the public areas when there were things going on were a little bit quieter than you may see on, an, on a normal cruise. Uh, again, here, no issues getting lounge chairs. Quite frankly, we haven't had issues getting lounge chairs on celebrity cruises in general, uh, they tend to have uh, a little more space per passenger, I believe, and maybe some more lounge chairs out. And uh, the staff is also usually pretty helpful and friendly in finding you one if you can't find a lounge chair. Again, now up here is the pool bar on deck 12, uh, another good spot to grab a drink if you're thirsty or uh, need to rehydrate in any way, shape, or form. Uh, this would be a good time for me to talk about the drink packages on Celebrity. They have uh, always included rates, which include drinks up to $10. To get drinks that are more than $10, you have to pay an additional cost, which currently is about $20 per person per day. Uh, we found a lot of the drinks, uh, right here is Slush also, they have... Uh, Frozen drinks there you can get. It wasn't open at that point, but it normally is open. We found a lot of the drinks were $11, which kind of rubbed us the wrong way that we'd have to upgrade to a larger package for drinks to for a dollar, basically. We did not upgrade on this. We have sometimes in the past, the nature of this cruise, we weren't going to be drinking much because it was, a uh, again, a, more of a professional event. But again, I think that's some place where Celebrity could do a little bit better and maybe leave the $10 drinks $10 drinks instead of making it 11 and having it have to pay a dollar upcharge plus the gratuity on the entire drink. Now, we were walking forward now and actually up to deck 15 where the sports deck is. The You cannot get from deck 15 on the forward deck side or the aft side you have to go down to one of the other decks because they are separated we're going to walk over here this is the retreat area the retreat area is celebrities ship within a ship concept obviously it is uh, more expensive than a standard stateroom but uh, up there is a retreat sun deck and in the glassed in area that we can't see into but they could probably see out of is the uh, again, the retreat area. Angela and I haven't done it. We were considering it for a cruise next year. Um, if you've done the retreat, let us know in the comments below. We're really interested in, uh, it's quite an additional cost and whether it's worth it or not, uh, how you enjoy the experience. Now, uh, we walked all the way up here because this is where the, uh, this area, by the way, is not retreat area. This is open to anybody right there. So that's a real quiet spot. Most people don't know about unless kids are playing basketball or soccer then it gets a little bit louder but up here again is right there is the uh, sports area uh, celebrity used to be known as a cruise line that was strictly for older people uh, similar to princess they are uh, they're, they're catering more to families there are younger people on board looking down there you can see the helicopter landing pad uh, the helicopter landing pad is also someplace where if you stay in concierge class Sometimes you can watch Sail Away or uh, Sail In uh, on with a, a little champagne or probably a Bloody Mary in the morning uh, from there if you're invited to stay in concierge class, which is a nice little thing. Angela and I have done that a couple of times. Very enjoyable. On this cruise, it was canceled because we had horrific rain going into Aruba, which, yes, I know, it doesn't rain in Aruba, but when Angela and Bill go to Aruba, it rains. Also up on deck 15, kind of near the uh, sports area, is Celebrities Camp at Sea. Now, again, Celebrities traditionally known as not having as many kids on board as Royal Caribbean, but that is changing a bit. There are more families sailing on board Celebrity than I've seen in the past. 
and they do have uh, various club areas. There's the X Club uh, and Camp at Sea, Shipmates, and a video arcade. Taking it down to deck 11, and then looking down at deck 10, it's kind of an interesting concept that some celebrity ships have, which is seating areas inside that isn't really on the main uh, promenade deck or, or main decks. As you can see here, the uh, you have the elevators, the uh, scenic elevators that go uh, top to bottom. The On deck 11, there is a library, and it continues down to deck 10. Uh, with seating areas in both both uh, both levels, really really nice area, very quiet. A lot of people took advantage of this on this particular ship, which uh, I was kind of surprised at because I've seen this area kind of go unused on previous cruises. But again, as you can see, there's there's plenty of books around. Uh, people were just sitting reading. Uh, again, seating on both levels, a uh, little quieter here but a nice spot to just kind of unwind and get away from the hustle and bustle. Located on deck 9, directly underneath the library area on deck 10 and 11, is a card room. Now, again, interesting concept. This was pretty crowded most of the time. Nice spot to play cards. Uh, some people were doing puzzles, I noticed, during it, playing different board games. Uh, again, real nice spot. Uh, one of the things we really love about Celebrity is there are some really nice spaces to uh, do different things. If you don't want to take part in, you know, the pool or the different activities going on, game shows and things like that, there is plenty to do, and the card room is a nice addition to that. As we take you down to Deck 7, I'd like to thank all of you who are continuing to watch this video. Uh, it's a little bit longer than we generally like to make the videos, but there's just so much information to give you, and we have so much more information to give at the end that I'm going to try to keep it as brief as possible. Now, on deck, deck 8 doesn't have any public areas. Deck 7 does have an area called Team Earth. Uh, it's an interesting concept. They, I guess it's uh, meant to be uh, kind of a quiet, and uh, there's different things, you know, up on the wall. There's some plants, and they talk about biodiversity. But again, another little seating area, a place where I guess you could do puzzles if you wanted to, or uh, just in general relax. The only uh, other thing that they have over here is the Captain's Club Concierge is also located on this level. Now this is kind of interesting here. This is a tree kind of suspended from a flower pot in the middle of the atrium. Uh, kind of screwed us up a little bit. There was one night where it was a little bit uh, rocky. The ship was rocking and it was kind of windy and the tree was moving. And if you went in the elevator and looked at it, you were wondering if maybe you took advantage of the drink package a little bit too much. Down on deck six, which is kind of the last area that has public spaces in the uh, generally passenger area is the eye lounge is located in here. Generally, if you're going to need assistance with any type of internet, um, this would be where you would go. They have uh, Apple specialists. They also sell some Apple products. Uh, unfortunately, as you can see, it looked like it was the photo desk that was handling most of their, uh, th their work here. They do have uh, spaces where you can use uh, Apple products. They have workstations if you need to connect. Uh, they are powered by Starlink. The internet was phenomenal. If you've been on a ship that has Starlink satellite nowadays, again, the internet is as good at home. However, understand that the infrastructure on the older ships in some cases is still older while the internet coming in is very fast. The Wi-Fi distribution sometimes isn't up to uh, capabilities. So if you're in public areas... The internet's going to be blistering fast. If you're in a stateroom and you're a little bit further away from uh, uh, the, the Wi-Fi hotspots on the ship, your speeds may be a little bit slower. I'm going to take you down to deck five aft now, which is one of the main decks where they have uh, specially dining. We're walking back to the aft part of the ship now. Uh, Angel and I generally don't film each other eating or film our meals. That's something we may consider doing in the future, but quite frankly, uh, food taste is subjective. And 
we prefer to enjoy our meals and also uh, to a certain degree feels kind of disrespectful to do food reviews in the middle of a dining room and have the camera out and everything we we prefer to just enjoy our meals and allow the people around us to enjoy their meals over here we have blue blue is a not so much a specialty restaurant but it is reserved for guests staying in aqua class accommodations um, I do speak about aqua class on some of the other videos I won't just touch on it but the uh, in blue this uh, has uh, a little more clean uh, and healthier options for food it's a special restaurant again only for aqua class guests however you can get anything off the main dining room in blue as well so you have plenty of options there as well real nice experience we did aqua class on the millennium you could check out the video on that and we really enjoyed it and walking out of blue as angel is planning the rest of the day there sitting down we go back to the tuscan grill the tuscan grill is there Combination, I would say, steakhouse and Italian. It's mainly Italian. The food was fantastic. I actually ate there twice on this cruise. Uh, again, food subjective, but I highly recommend the meatball. Uh, excellent steaks, excellent Italian options. The antipasto was fantastic. Everything here was really, really good. Uh, again, uh, Tuscan is an additional cost, and it does sell out. Uh, all especially restaurants do sell a lot on celebrities, so it's one of those things I would probably book earlier than later if you're interested in doing one of these specialty dining options. Again, thank you for watching this video and sticking around this long. If you're getting value out of it, please hit that like button, and if you want to see more videos like this, uh, please consider subscribing. It really helps us out. Angela's still playing the rest of the day, and over here is Cuisine. Now, Cuisine is especially restaurant again. Uh, it's a smaller restaurant. You definitely want to reserve this early. But it's different in that it's an animated show. They have specialty lighting that projects down onto your table and your plate and uh, has miniature chefs basically preparing a meal. I believe there's five or six different menus with different shows that go along with it. Uh, on the video I did on the Celebrity Millennium, I show you a little bit of it. So if you want to check out Cuisine and Le Petit Chef, Definitely check that video out and you can see a little bit more of it. Walking forward from those three specialty restaurants in the back, we now are going towards the uh, Ensemble Lounge. Uh, we spent a lot of time in the Ensemble Lounge. We had some really, really great uh, servers here that every time we sat down kind of knew what you wanted. That's one of the great things about cruise ships is... Uh, after you've been there a couple of days and you treat people nicely, they they rem remember what you drink. They know your name. They remember what you're drinking. They bring it to you with a big smile on their face. Uh, the service is fantastic. Located off the Ensemble Lounge is Murano. Murano is their French option. I did eat here one night, Angela and I. It was absolutely phenomenal. The meal we had was beyond belief uh the food was fantastic we actually uh were invited by one of the high executives from royal caribbean cruise line to dine with her that evening and uh we really enjoyed it and the, the service again phenomenal the food was fantastic while all the food on celebrity was very good uh i can't recommend especially dining enough it was uh that's actually the room we dined in the night with we were there it was a very very special experience they prepare a lot of the foods right in front of you. Uh, again, just fantastic. Exiting Murano, and next to it is the Retreat Lounge. Again, the Retreat is for guests that are uh, are staying in, in suites on Celebrity, which is not us. And I tried to peek in there with the camera, but not allowed. While we enjoy the Ensemble Lounge, the one knock I will give to it is they tend to do trivias in there, and it was a little bit uh, spread out. It could kind of get a little bit loud with traffic back and forth, and it really wasn't the greatest place to do trivia. People walking in to do dinner would, like, yell out uh, answers, and that was, that was a little bit of a bummer for some people. Walking forward from the Ensemble Lounge going towards the main part of the ship or the... Uh, Cafe Albaccio and Sushi on Five 
it's an interesting area. They have this on all the Solstice class ships in this particular area. It's a little different on each one. This one is kind of uh, flowers. Not really 100% sure what it was, but I'm sure it's a very Instagrammable spot, as uh, people like to say. Continuing forward on Deck 5, uh, they had this outside the elevator area. It's a very, very nice little uh, display there. But this is the area of uh, Cafe El Baccio and the Gelataria. Over here, the Gelataria has uh, gelato. Obviously, it was closed at this point. Uh, this was the site of the famous Cookie Gate, which occurred on our very cruise. Uh, there's a video on that on the channel that we spoke about Cookie Gate and the $2 upcharge that lasted for about an hour on the celebrity cruise we were on. Again, this is a very popular area over here. The Gelataria is an additional charge over here. Cafe Al Baccio uh, is not. I believe some of the specialty coffees may be an additional charge. And you can also get some mixed drinks there as well, which is a nice option. Most people didn't seem to know. But this would be where you get your free chocolate chip cookies as opposed to the $2 chocolate chip cookies at the Gelataria. Walking across to the port side, and guess what floor the sushi is on on Celebrity Cruises, Angela? Yes, Sushi on 5. That's a, a standard joke we have. What floor is Sushi on? Because the restaurant's name is Sushi on 5. Uh, sushi on 5, obviously, is another one of the additional charge restaurants. I don't go into the pricing of things because the pricing can change pretty regularly. Uh, there's a little menu there. You can you can look online, and people are posting all the time menus and what the prices are for things. So that's probably a, a more reliable thing to do than uh, for me to give you something in a video that may or may not be accurate. Continuing forward on deck five is uh, the right, be, right around the corner is the World Class Bar. The World Class Bar is where uh, you can get some uh, craft cocktails, I guess you would call it, uh, with some better liquors. They You wouldn't get your standard rum and coke here. This would be where you would get uh, rums like Zacapa, and they make old fashions. They make an incredible old fashioned here if you have the deluxe package. The drinks are a little bit more expensive here, but uh, again, great service. Didn't use it so much on this ship. But we did when we were on the Celebrity Reflection, and uh, I have some video of that as well. Continuing on are the standard shops, Effie. Uh, again, uh, not sure I'm going to be buying diamonds on a cruise ship, but a lot of people do. And I guess the values are pretty good because people that seem to know what they're doing do purchase, uh, purchase those items. Auto auction, uh, right there is Angel and I's favorite piece that we have our eyes on for a while. Just got to kind of figure out where it would fit, and we'll probably end up not getting on a cruise ship anyway because it tends to be more expensive, and I've just been told no. Continue to walk forward. As you can see, there's more areas where the art is displayed. Uh, we did not go to the art auctions on this cruise. We got bit by that bug once, spent a lot of money. Did furnish our house, but it was very nice. Again, uh, here is uh, watch stores. I was looking for a Mont Blanc pen store. They didn't have it on this one. The last time I saw it was on the Millennium. But you can get your higher-end items here. Again, check the pricing. Just because it's duty-free does not necessarily mean it's less expensive or cheaper. Uh, you have access to the internet now. You can see what the price of things are on things like sunglasses and higher-end pocketbooks and perfumes and things of that nature. As we continue through, uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you sailed on Celebrity? Have you been on one of the new Edge Class ships? Have you been on any of the other, uh, the, the Millennium Series or the Salsa Series? If you have, let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are on Celebrity as a brand and of this ship, where it falls within the celebrity fleet in general. Off to the left there was the photo studio where you can pick up uh, the photos that they take of you. Again, additional charge on those items as well. Heading over to the Celebrity Theater, or the Equinox Theater now. Um, we spent a lot of hours in here doing training, so it was a little bit of torture for us. 
But the shows were excellent. We enjoyed them. Uh, they did not have many main uh, main shows. It was mainly guest entertainers and their own orchestra. But the guest entertainers were, were excellent. Uh, again, we didn't catch all the shows because it was a very busy schedule. But what we saw, we did enjoy. And we generally enjoy the entertainment in the main theater at most of the cruises that we've been on. And through Magic, we went from Deck 5 to Deck 4, where we're going to walk you... Uh, aft this time from the front of the ship towards the back of the ship. This venue is Celebrity Central. It's a small theater type of setup. They had uh, various game shows. Hi, Angela. They had various shows in here. They also had uh, some guest lecture appearances. The guy uh, that was uh, a, a an older comedian that uh, did some... Uh, uh, lecture series. One of them was on Lucia Ball, showed some clips of Lucia Ball, told some information about her that we didn't know. That was very interesting. A uh, little bit hard to get around in here. So if there's an event in here that you want to see, I would get there before the show starts because after the show starts, it gets a little bit tight, a uh, little hard to get seating in there, and definitely a little hard to move around. The area right outside here is called the Entertainment Court. It's, uh, they have some some game shows. They'll do uh, different trivias and things like that in here. Uh, pretty interesting place. You walk by and all of a sudden there's something going on. You kind of check it out. Uh, entertainment on cruise ships is, is fantastic. And the amount of things to do is very cool. This is Quasar. That is their, their disco. Uh, Angela and I aren't. Uh, night owls, especially when we had to be up at 7 a.m. every day. We didn't really get to spend a whole lot of time in here other than when there were uh, cruise lines doing presentations, believe it or not. But uh, interesting uh, interesting venue, interesting room. Uh, as you can see, it actually was set up as a conference room for the presentations. And that little bowl over there is a DJ booth, which is kind of interesting. I guess it would be kind of cool. We'll have to check it out the next time and and there is my lovely wife, Angela, there, waving hello to everybody. Again, Celebrity Central, uh, right off of that, is the entertainment court. Over here is the Future Cruise Consultant area, which is always busy. Uh, I always uh, tell my clients to check out the Future Cruise uh, Consultant desk. Usually, you get a little extra onboard credit. You can still use uh, my services. Book on there. Just let them know you're working with a travel advisor and... They will hook you up. And then when you get home, I can double check and make sure that you've gotten the best pricing. But again, generally, it's reduced deposits and some extra onboard credit. Uh, always, uh, always a good deal on most cruise lines. Here we'll walk you through some of the shops on the uh, on deck four. These are not the higher end shops. As you can see, you get your uh, necessary toiletries, uh, things you may have forgotten at home. Uh, pretty expensive in general. So, uh, you know, try to bring it from home if you can. Uh, if you forget something, it's a great option that they have things here, though. Um, liquors. Let's talk about liquors again. Uh, know your prices. Uh, sometimes things are pretty decent priced. Sometimes things are double what you get at your local Sam's Club or Price Club. So I highly recommend knowing what your pricing is. Uh, they have uh, also cigars, as you can see, if you like a cigar. I don't believe there's a cigar lounge on this ship. I could be wrong, but I didn't see one. But there are smoking areas. Uh, over here attached, you can get your logo gear, uh, less expensive sunglasses, uh, different t-shirts, souvenirs, uh, ship models, ornaments, costume jewelry, uh, different clothing. If you forgot something or you weren't really prepared, they do have some clothing you can purchase there. Uh, also, a nice option if, God forbid, your luggage gets lost because you didn't tip the porters at the pier. Uh, hint, tip the porters at the pier. Across from the shops is the casino area. Uh, a nice variety of games. We didn't do too well on this one. We didn't lose too much either. But uh, lots of slots. Uh, decent amount of table games. Excellent bar in there. Nice vibe. Uh, was was pretty busy. Uh, obviously, now it's in port, so that's why we were able to film Always an interesting conversation is casino offers. Uh, I have a friend that does it does quite well with getting casino offers and a few other uh, clients that get casino offers. Uh, interested to know, if you are a gambler, do you think it's worth it 
getting the free cruises versus how much you spend on the ship to get the free cruises. Exiting out of that area to the right here is the Martini Bar. Uh, Martini Bar is really, really neat. Normally at night, that area in the middle there will be filled with ice and they'll have uh, different bottles that are, uh, are displayed. The top of the bar is actually, uh, they, I guess it's refrigerated or frozen. It's almost to create almost like a hockey arena on top of the bar. That is ice. Uh, Flair bartending, they make phenomenal martinis and they put on shows every night. I think I have a video of one of them. I'll probably throw up as a short on our YouTube channel so you can kind of see uh, see what, what that's all about. But that's always it's always crowded there also. If you get a seat at the bar at the Martini Bar, you're usually very lucky. And here we have the Silhouette Dining Room, which is uh, Celebrity's main dining room. They have uh, set time dining and also uh, a uh, anytime dining. The the food was fantastic. We really enjoyed it a lot. Um, they have changed their menu a little bit lately, and I have, uh, in my opinion, less options. It's similar to Royal Caribbean, uh, Royal Caribbean menus and celebrity menus used to be much more extensive. They had more everyday favorites available. Uh, we think it's a big miss that the cruise lines in general are uh, removing some of the options. It, it makes it a little bit more difficult if you're traveling with children or picky eaters. Um, definitely would like to see more options. Uh, the food quality was very good. The service was, was, was excellent. Uh, no complaints there. Beautiful dining room. But again, I'd like to see cruise lines offer more options rather than less. As we walk through a little more, um, i just kind of give you some of my thoughts. Uh, again, uh, we, Angela and I love cruises. We go on probably a dozen cruises a year on various cruise lines. We love them all for what they are. We enjoy Carnival for what Carnival is. We enjoy Princess. We enjoy Disney. They were all great. We do see a trend where they are uh, nickel and diming people, giving you a little bit less. Um, personally, I'd rather see them charge a couple of dollars more and not nickel and dime you. Uh, the cookie gave video up there was very annoying. It was $2. But it was very, very annoying the way they did it. Uh, that being said, I still think cruising is the best value that, that there is in vacation. Uh, the food that's included, the entertainment, is top-notch, better than anything I've seen in any all-inclusives. Over here is Craft Social, uh, kind of a sports ball concept. There's foosball, uh, TVs on. They had a lot of uh, games being shown. Uh, they had different types of beer there as well. It's all kind of all in that same atrium area, but this was a really, really nice spot. Uh, again, great service at all the bars. We really enjoyed it, and we enjoyed the variety of, of places that you could go on this cruise ship if we had time. Now we're going to walk you down to a deck three. Uh, deck three is known as the Grand Foyer area. Um, it's below all of the, uh, the decks four, five, and six, obviously. But uh, this area, there's a staircase that goes down there, a grand staircase. At the bottom of the staircase, they have a lot of shows. That sometimes they'll have singers, uh, singers that are from the production show. will do shows in here. They'll have piano. They have band set up. Uh, a lot of dancing going on here. And uh, it's, it's a nice spot, especially for singers, because people can watch from the decks above and look down and see the show. Now, located off of the Grand Foyer is guest services. Now, a couple of things about guest services you'll hear in all my videos. Check your onboard account regularly. Check it often. Check it early. If you have any issues, go to guest services immediately and try to get it resolved. Something we're noticing on all cruise lines is they are a little slow or resistant to um, Fixing issues with onboard accounts. So if you get no at first, ask to speak to a supervisor. Uh, it used to be a lot easier to get charges removed that obviously weren't yours. Right now you have to jump through a little more hoops uh, than normally. But usually they resolve it in your favor if it actually is in your favor. If it's not in your favor, then you know obviously you're not entitled to things. Opposite is the Shore Excursion Desk. As you see, it's a little bit crowded. Um, 
Again, if you haven't booked a shore excursion ahead of time or independently, that's where you would go. And if you had a problem with the shore excursion, that's also where you would go. Over here is a passport bar. Uh, this is a bar that's really not discovered early on in the cruise. We usually get our first drink at the passport bar because it's a little bit less crowded than most before people realize it. And as you can see here at night, got a little bit more crowded. One thing everybody asks about is the food. Uh, so we're going to take you back up to Deck 14, to the Ocean View Cafe. One area that we feel celebrity really excels at is the variety of options and the quality of options in their buffet area. Uh, I'll walk you around a little bit. I believe this was lunch. I, I have a couple of clips in here. You can see they have hamburgers and hot dogs and salads, but in general, they have a lot of uh, lot of options. Uh, in, for breakfast, for instance, they have English bacon, which I happen to be a huge fan of. They have a lot of different international options, stir fries. They have uh, Indian, a lot of Indian food, a lot of spicy food. Generally, several different types of uh, carving stations set up. Again, uh, food find that food is very good. Plenty of seating as well. Uh, we didn't have any issues at all getting seating other than at the real, real rush, crush times uh, of the day. And, of course, they have pizza, which was very good. Again, as you can see, the, the variety was, was excellent. Also located in there towards the back of the ship uh, is a, uh, a full-service bar where you can get your drinks. Uh, they will bring you drinks and coffee, the servers, if you, uh, you ask for it. Uh, again, drinks are if you have the drink package. And as on most cruise ships, if you can't find a spot inside, there's a really nice spot uh, all the way aft of the uh, buffet. Where you can sit down and, and have your breakfast or have your meal back there. Uh, very nice spot. Also located back there is the Ocean View Bar which uh, is another spot where you can get drinks if you, uh, you so desire. And the moment you've all been waiting for, or at least everybody that's been watching through the uh, entire video, what are Angela and I's final thoughts on the Celebrity Equinox and whether it's for you or not? Uh, we're on deck four now, going to walk around the promenade deck. Uh, before we tell you our final thoughts, again, thank you for watching. We really appreciate all the support we've gotten. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button, leave a comment below with your thoughts on the channel, and please consider subscribing. Uh, we're closing in on 4,000 subscribers as of this moment. We'd love to get to 5,000 by the new year, but I don't think it's possible. But anyway, uh, our thoughts on Celebrity Equinox. Uh, we, we enjoyed the ship. This was a different cruise for us because, again, it was a convention, so uh, it was more of a like going to school at sea, which was awesome. But it's still, we didn't get to enjoy the ship quite as much as I feel we would have on normal cruises. Uh, the ship is excellent. It was beautiful, in great shape. Uh, you would have no, never have any idea this ship is a little bit older in their fleet. Uh, great condition. Celebrity does a great job maintaining their ships. Service is fantastic. Uh, there's a separate video on the stateroom up there. We really enjoyed the stateroom as well. Uh, the entertainment, even though there weren't uh, a lot of big headliner shows that we saw, the guest entertainers that we saw were, were very good. Things that we would like to see improved. Uh, in general, we'd like to see the cruise lines uh, include more in their pricing. Not nickel and dime after you're on the ship. I mentioned a couple of times the cookie cake uh, incident. It's funny. It was $2.00. But it really was kind of annoying that uh, you spend a lot of money and, uh, you know, they, they nickel and diming. People would much rather spend, you know, a couple of hundred extra dollars and be left alone, especially uh, Celebrity, which is a premium cruise line. Uh, I can understand I'm more of a bargain cruise line, but Celebrity is a pre premium cruise line. Do we recommend Celebrity Cruise Lines, particularly the Equinox? Absolutely. In fact, we have four more cruises planned on Celebrity over the next year and a half. So 
Uh, Celebrity is a great cruise line in our books. Again, thank you for watching. On behalf of Angela, we really appreciate it. And we will see you all on our next adventure. Bye-bye, everybody.